welcome to Biology Professor. Today is a brief introduction to the very complicated topic of cell respiration. Cell respiration begins with something called glycolysis. Glycolysis literally means sugar splitting. Glyco, sugar, like glucose, lysis, splitting. So it begins with glucose, which comes from the food that we ingest, and glucose is converted to a molecule called pyruvate in 10 enzymatically catalyzed steps. Pyruvate, another name for pyruvate is pyruvic acid. And this happens in the cytosol. Now there are a couple of things that are made in glycolysis. One is ATP. So ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is a very important way that the cell stores energy. So glycolysis is taking energy from glucose and storing it in ATP. Now a lot of the energy from glucose is still within pyruvate. Also, there are some high energy electrons that have been taken from glucose and put into something called an electron carrier known as NADH. Now at this point, if the cell is in an oxygen poor environment, so there's not enough oxygen for it to continue with normal aerobic respiration, it will proceed into different types of fermentation pathways, also known as anaerobic respiration, so respiration without oxygen. This is not the most efficient and you don't get much ATP from it. However, if the cell does have oxygen, it can proceed with aerobic respiration, which is the rest of what we're going to be talking about today. That is when pyruvate enters the mitochondria. So, this happened in the cytosol. Now, the product of glycolysis has to enter the mitochondrion, which is one of the organelles. The mitochondrion is made up of two membranes. So there is an outer membrane, an inner membrane, which has all of these folds. The folds are called prepsae. The space between the outer and inner membrane is known as the intermembrane space, so that's what's here. And then there is the mitochondrial matrix, which is what is inside the inner membrane. So pyruvate moves into the mitochondrion, specifically into the matrix, where it is oxidized. The process of pyruvate oxidation generates another one of these electron carriers, NADH, which remember is just a way for the cell to remove energy further from pyruvate. Now, the product of pyruvate oxidation is known as acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA then enters the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle has a few different names. It's also called the citric acid cycle, the tricarboxylic acid cycle, and the TCA cycle. But they're all the same names for this process, which is also happening still in the mitochondrial matrix. The Krebs cycle is generating a few electron carriers, more NADH, which we've already heard of, but also another electron carrier called FADH2. And in the process of the Krebs cycle, which is multiple steps and involves multiple enzymes, we're also making some more ATP. Remember that ATP is that really important energy storage molecule for the cell. It is a very easy way for the cell to store energy that it can get to quickly when it's needed. Now, we've talked a lot about electron carriers. We had the NADH from glycolysis, another NADH from pyruvate oxidation, and NADH and FH, 
the two molecules from the Krebs cycle. Now, all of these various electron carriers are going to move to something called the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is made up of several enzymes that are embedded within the cristae of the mitochondria. So you can see that this, this inner membrane, all of these folds, result in a large amount of surface area so that a mitochondrion can, can contain many, many electron transport chains. Now, the purpose of these electron transport chains is that these electron carriers come to this chain and give it their high energy electrons. The electrons are then passed down the chain to multiple different enzymes, and at the same time, energy is being taken from those high energy electrons and it's being used to pump protons across the membrane. Now, protons are actually hydrogen ions, which are made up of a proton. And so the effect here is to get a lot of hydrogen ions building up in this intermembrane space. So up here is the intermembrane space, down here is the matrix, and this is that inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Now, the next part is where we get the majority of ATP from aerobic respiration. All of these hydrogen ions that have been pumped across the membrane are then able to flow back down their concentration gradient, so back into the matrix through an enzyme called ATP synthase. So all of these hydrogen ions are going to flow back this way, and that is going to power ATP synthase to be able to turn ADP, so adenosine diphosphate, plus an inorganic phosphate into ATP, so adenosine triphosphate, this very important energy storage molecule of the cell. And so even though there are three places that aerobic respiration makes ATP, that is a little bit from glycolysis, a little bit from the Krebs cycle, most of the ATP is made right here. This is why aerobic respiration is so important. The electrons that are getting passed down the electron transport chain are eventually added to a molecule of oxygen along with a couple of protons making water. So this is why oxygen is required. It is known as the final electron acceptor. And remember that when there is no oxygen present to accept the electrons coming down the chain, the electron transport chain will get essentially jammed up without oxygen waiting at the end and that will force the cell to move into anaerobic respiration, which again is just glycolysis followed by fermentation. You're just getting a little bit of ATP. It's not nearly as effective as aerobic respiration in obtaining energy for the cell from this original starting molecule of glucose. So that is aerobic respiration in a nutshell. Thanks for watching Biology Professor. I hope you learned a lot.